Welcome back. Donald Trump officially accepted his party's nomination during the final night of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee. And he broke his own record delivering the longest acceptance speech in history, a speech that he reportedly wrote himself. 92 minutes. He started with a dramatic retelling of the assassination attempt. He touched on national unity, but then later went back to his greatest hits. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America. I'm not supposed to be here tonight. Not supposed to be here. Yes, you are. Democrats want to unify our country. They should drop these partisan witch hunts, which I have been going through for approximately eight years. NBC's Von Hillier joins us now from the RNC site in Milwaukee and also back with us, Pete Seat and Alencia Johnson. So, Vaughn, a marathon speech from Trump was supposed to be about unity. It doesn't sound like that's what he delivered. Right. I think in terms of the tenor, and I know Pete can attest to this from being inside past convention rooms in which Donald Trump has given these speeches, that the tenor in, of his delivery was much more subdued, if you will. But ultimately, when it got to actually talking about the Donald Trump agenda, there was little suggestion that there was a more moderating Donald Trump involved or that there was calls for great compromise with Democrats if he were to take back the White House or a moderating of positions from uh, abortion to, uh, uh, you know, to the U.S. military overseas. I think for Donald Trump, I would just want to let you hear directly from him because when he was on teleprompter, there was one script and then he went to on to talk about cheating in elections and praise for the likes of Viktor Orban and his relationship with Kim Jong-un when he was off. Take a listen to part of his remarks last night. We must not criminalize dissent or demonize political disagreement. In that spirit, the Democrat Party should immediately stop weaponizing the justice system. It's a massive invasion at our southern border that has spread misery, crime, poverty, disease, and destruction. There's an interesting statistic. The ears are the bloodiest part. If something happens with the ears, they bleed more than any other part of the body. Anna, when he was talking about the shooting, he started off his remarks in rather great detail about that event and how it transpired and the, the fact that how he understood that he was so close to the near-death experience that he was lucky to be there delivering that speech from the, co the convention there last night. Anna. And, Ron, we can hear them taking apart stuff, dismantling the, the grounds there since this convention is now over. Pete, Trump made false claims a lot in that 92-minute speech about everything from how much border wall was built during his presidency to North Korea missile launches to the Biden tax plan and his own tax cuts during his administration and on and on. In many ways, this was vintage Trump. Did he do anything to help himself with on-the-fence voters? You mentioned greatest hits earlier, and this reminds me of that aging rocker who goes back to the studio after 20 years to cut an all-acoustic album, goes out on tour, does a couple of those acoustic songs, and then plays the greatest hits, because that's why people show up. They show up to hear their best. And Donald Trump ended up returning true to form. And probably the best sign that we know he's quite all right and doing OK is that he was authentically Trump for 70 minutes of that speech. But I also think the cynical side of me, Anna, the cynical side says that there was so much buildup about rewriting the speech and how it was going to be a different tone and tenor, which it was for 15 to 20 minutes. But a lot of that buildup, I think, was to try and attract viewers to listen to the rally speech he was not able to give on Saturday in Pennsylvania. That's what he ultimately delivered. Alencia, given all the drama that's going on inside the Democratic Party right now, what's your thinking coming out of the RNC now about how formidable a candidate Trump is? Well, I think he showed us the candidate that, quite frankly, we could beat. I was doing some research this morning. 
there was no mention of the word abortion at all this week when previous conventions, they would mention the word abortion up to 18 times in one night. This is an issue that when they were running 2016, they were bragging about appointing justices to overturn Roe v. Wade. They got their wish. It's a losing issue, and it is going to be the issue that gets Democrats over the line. They don't talk about it. They're not talking about their relationship with the NRA when we know that gun rights is also an issue that drives our base because we want to, you know, ban assault weapons. They didn't talk about the fact that President Trump was the reason that President Biden actually couldn't get a border deal through because he made calls to Republican congressional leaders and as they're sitting there with mass deportation now signs. So we actually saw a candidate that the Democratic Party, President Biden, and if he steps out of the race, it has to be Vice President Harris, that ticket will actually beat Donald Trump. And so it was actually very helpful for us that he was very soft but didn't talk about the issues that clearly galvanize our base. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.